Olivier, welcome to Show Studio. Thank you. Now, you've transformed Bauman. It's so relevant, so prominent. Tell me, what was your initial aim when you were made creative director in 2011? Um, you know, it's really funny because I, I didn't know what it means to be creative director. You know, it's, you just learn from school how to be a designer. You just learn how to try to make beautiful clothes, the tailoring, you know, the right shorter paths, the, the right details, you know, the, try choosing the right fabric. I think, you know, like when I became creative director, I, f I, I really didn't know what's going to happen to my life. So mm -hmm. I, c I just wanted to, to please like my customers, my president, you know, I was like a kid also. So I was just like <laughs> literally just understanding like the business and trying to make the most beautiful collection, making obviously like the best sellers and everything. But I mean, I think um, now being creative director for me, it's something completely different. It's also making a big business, yeah. which I'm doing, but it's also like expressing more my point of view, more myself, you know, something that is more maybe personal, more emotional that maybe, you know, four years ago, you, I didn't dare to do. So mm. I learned a lot about myself also. Because you were just 25 when you took over, it was incredibly young and a lot was made of that. Did you feel ever out of your depth? Have you ever felt out of your depth? Um, honestly, like, uh, what do you mean by out of your depth? Kind of like overwhelmed or like not up to the job or, you know, intimidated, I guess. Um, no, never. Like, weirdly, I have, I have a big confidence, like, um, and it's not pretension. I mean, I really worked a lot, you know, yeah. I'm really, really, I'm a person that left my, my, family when I was 18 and I used to go to Italy and work for six years for Cavalli. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I worked so much, like I didn't have weekends. I was not partying like maybe a young guy would do. Uh, I also put uh, aside my private life, you know, so I think, I, yes, I, I think I deserved what I did and what I have today. Like mm. I really worked hard mm. and I still do. <laughs> you must work incredibly hard. People, it's interesting though that you talk about um, you know, sort of putting aside your private life, because I think one of the things that you've done very, very cleverly is, you know, involve yourself in the brand and you've become, you know, a real ambassador for it, as well as being um, a creative director. And people make a lot of, you know, your Instagram presence, like you're the most followed French designer. And they've said that you're your own best advert. What, do you agree with that? Do you think that's true? Um, I think, yes, I'm the ambassador of the house, you know, but I mean, I couldn't do that four years ago, is what I tell you. Like, now I think the house is growing up as much uh, at the same time I'm growing, you know, like, like a person. Like, I'm looking for myself a lot, you know, I'm, I have my own doubts. I mean, I'm trying to, to understand who I am more and more. I'm literally, like, growing up with the house, but at the same time, I feel like uh, with Instagram, you know, I... I get a lot of followers and people get into my universe and that's something that I like because now you like Bauman and you like also me, you know, and if you hate some choices that I can do, you also hate the choices for the house, but you know, it's something that it's, it's really personal and at the same time, I think you need the truth, you need um, sincerity, you know, and that's what I do, like I put a lot of emotion in my, in my, in my brand and, uh, mm -hmm. and also a lot of work, so yeah. Is that ever intimidating though when you pour yourself as a person and your personality into the brand so much because you know, it means you, you're putting yourself kind of very much out there, is that Yeah, okay? but I think it's important today because um, you know, I think you know, it's over like designers that actually are in you know, like a, a tower and we don't see them, you know, like I think now people want to have more emotions, you know, they want to see clothes but they want to also get into a universe, you know, there's something yeah. more real about everything and it's not only fashion, it's also music. It, it's also TV, you know, like why it's so important to the real TV, like all, all like albums, singers, like they speak about l their life also, you know, so I feel like to also sell to people a dream and a story, you need also to be true and to show who you are. And that's what I'm doing with, with Bauman, you know, I'm showing that I'm this kind of guy that actually grew up pretty fast and showing my selfies, my uh, whatever, like my hangovers, but also <laughs> my collection, a $25,000 dress, also me working on a tailored jacket. Uh, you know, like I'm just showing, you know, my life. I can be with my friends that may be famous in LA. I can be with my grandma for Christmas. I think it's, just, it's also really interesting for people to see that fashion is also more accessible. You know, there's mm -hmm. something that is less elitist. And I kind of like that, you know, because I, I, like, I like the pop effect, you know, I love the population, the popular thing, so mm. that's why I think it's important for me to give more to people, you know, it's a piece of a dream that you actually want to give to to the world, so. Mm. Yeah, you said before in interviews that, you know, uh, you, the, the question that you'd been asked in this case, 
you were talking about um, casting and, and the diversity in casting, but you said something that really struck with me. You said that, you know, fashion people talk to themselves too much. Yeah. Tell, tell me more about that. I think, I think, and I get so many haters when I saw that, <laughs> when I say that. Um, yes, I feel like, it's what I told you, four years ago, I was really working for my front row. You know, like yeah. when, I mean, I didn't know what was happening to me. You know, I was a designer and after the girl, the choreographer of the show told me like, now it's time for you to go under the spotlight. So I just literally went there, seeing all this light and I was like, okay, my life's gonna change. And you just see like the first faces and it's like front row. So you can imagine all the amazing people that you have in the front row. And, um, and people that actually I really like, but you know, at the end of the day, I mean, four years after you realize that Fashion is not only that. Fashion is not the people that is only in your room. Fashion mm -hmm. is so much more than that. And, and that's why I really love the comments on my Instagram. You know, it can be haters, it can be lovers, it can be buyers, it can be uh, people from magazine, it can be a uh, young kid that want to do fashion, it can be uh, black guys that are super happy to see me as a designer and say, okay, you give you give an you are an inspiration for us or mm -hmm. like you know like uh, young girls loving my friend and say oh i love that you go out with this girl or i mean i just i just like that i just like to feel like fashion is more pop yes mm. i think a lot of designers and maybe a lot of people in the industry are quite conservative they're scared of that kind of conversation they're scared of that um, that flexibility where people can comment and the democratization of, of fashion and you know they like to keep themselves very hidden away and quite yeah. inaccessible. Do you find that quite strange or frustrating? No, I completely understand. You know, when you expose yourself, I think you need to understand that having one million followers today as a designer is not, you know, it's not an easy thing. You know, it's not just waking up and taking a selfie. There is something more than that. It's, yeah. it's deeper, obviously, because you expose yourself. It's way easier to just be, to hide yourself in a room, you know, and just waiting for your house to actually shoot your clothes, to, to uh, sorry, wait like uh, maybe your president paying some magazine and like that you get more press, you know, like I feel like, you know, I'm showing my clothes, I'm showing my way of seeing fashion, I'm not responding to the mafia, I just love really the fact that I'm, I'm honest and true to myself and, and yes, I think it, it's also a risk when you expose yourself, but it's, um, mm. it's a risk that I want to take because I want to be, I want to stay true to myself. Mm. Do you think that that's quite a new view of luxury? Because I think for a long time people thought that luxury was about exclusivity and about, you know, not being able, only a select few people would, yeah. would come to know the, the creative director of a house, you know, that it was very closed off and, you know, you've really thrown that out. You've proved that you can be very out there as a person and still keep that that real idea of luxury as part of Bauman? I think, I think luxury, it's, not some, it's something that is, is um, evolving, you know? Yeah. What was luxury in the 70s, what was luxury in the 20s, what was luxury in the 80th century, it can't be the same in 2015. And I really believe that also because I'm doing a lot of couture, my work is a lot of craftsmanship, yeah. uh, I feel like it's already unique, my work. And I think what is modern in that is also like putting that on a digital and, sh and actually sharing that. Because I think, you know, um, social media, uh, in a way, it doesn't mean that it's become vulgar, you know. It can still be really luxury and really couture and really unique and feel like really elitist at the same time, sharing with the entire world. Why we can't do that? And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, the 90s was also, was also like that because also with the top models, you know, when I remember like Naomi and Claudia and... Linda and um, you know like the crazy show and you were also seeing the girls that were also like more communicating about fashion you know you remember like big campaigns and you know you really remember that fashion was talking a lot more to people in the street you know like my mom she remembers like some shows and she's not a fashion addict but today I feel like sometimes fashion goes too closed yeah. and um, and I think it's sad because at one point you know you just become like a you know, you're just alone in your room and just catching for yourself, you know, like you just need to actually like share with people. Mm. You said today that sometimes fashion becomes too closed. Do you think that is because people are nervous at the moment? It is a time of change for the industry and there's so many huge changes, which I think you've truly embraced, things like social media, but... I love what's happening to fashion industry now because it's just so funny how people can be like so rude and mean like four years ago and shares, it changed their mind four years after. I love yeah. what's happening now. I just think it's... It's just like a revolution. It's not only an evolution. I really feel like there is revolution in that, in the in the fashion world. And uh, but also like the concept of the celebrities, like uh, being like you see more celebrities now on the cover of magazine that models. Why? Because I think now 
also fashion realize that you don't maybe put any more the new faces because you just have always you know girls that are going to be disa going to disappear into months you know mm. so i feel like now we we are changing that we want to go back to the top models we want to go back to real girls on the catwalk we want to actually push girls to become top models and not just forgetting them after two months. We want to sell magazines, we have celebrities on the cover. I think there is something really strong and new that's happening. And I think fashion world, in a way, is becoming more pop. Really, mm -hmm. I feel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's on Instagram, but like five years ago, they were like, oh, you can't put, on the, you can't put luxury on internet. You can't sell luxury on internet, you know? Yeah. And now, I mean, like all the houses are on Instagram and hoping to actually get followers. Do you think you've spearheaded that in some ways? I Sorry? think. Do you think you've spearheaded that in some ways? I do think people would look at you and your career and Bauman as a brand and follow that example. I think you've been very innovative. Um, I don't know how. You know, it's a really interesting question. I don't know what's gonna. Um, I always ask myself what I'm gonna leave to the story. You know, what what's gonna happen? You know, like um, uh, I think it's really deep question because. Um, my dream is actually that people will remember me like uh, it's uh, but not for pretension you know it's just because i i love the um, the fact that people uh like me that, i mean i have to say like i i look for it i love the fact that i feel loved like i'm a human person and i would love that maybe in some i mean when i'm gonna die like people remember me like for someone that pushed some boundaries and i think more than the digital like you know, I come from an orphanage, you know, I'm like, I was like one years old when my parents adopted me. And I think it's a strong also message to show that, you know, I, I, I'm a black boy in a white family. Um, I've been adopted. I was in an orphanage and getting all what I get today, I can show to people actually, you know, dream come true. Just work for it. You don't care about your start. Make sure uh, that uh, the future is going to be better, you know, just make sure that you're going to be stronger. So I think as a, as a human person, a, a human being, I really hope that people can get that as like a hope, you know, like uh, don't, uh, I mean, dare and don't, don't be afraid. And after in fashion, I, I don't know, because I feel like I'm going to leave something, but I don't know, I don't know what. I mean, I, and actually that I don't know, like I have no idea. You mentioned your upbringing there, and we've talked quite a lot about the present, but I want to go back and ask about the past. And... Tell me about what you were like as a boy. You've talked about yourself as a boy of the world, and I suppose that, that you were referring to your ethnicity there. Tell me a bit about what you were like growing up and, and being, cause, as you say, you know, a black boy in a white family. And I think, you know, my life was like my, my Instagram today, trying to, <laughs> to have a lot of likes. I mean, obviously, like, you don't get followers when you are, like, four or five years old, but when you have the best, you know, the best results at the school, you're just happy because everybody's like, oh, you're a good, you're a good student. I was trying to satisfy everybody that was around me. I was um, also, I had a lot of doubts. I was really scared, like when I was a kid, you know, like I was, I remember that um, I was always bringing my pyjama everywhere because I was scared that my parents give, um, abandoned me again, you know, like so that's so, I mean, it's kind of really strong thing. So I wanted always to please people to actually make sure that I'm going to keep them around me. And, and I think that's also like a result of my life, Instagram, because why people is following me now, why I get so many likes and everything, because I'm in a way like I'm still looking for it. You know, it's something that you always keep in you, and you and it's not gonna disappear like that. So I grew up like uh, I was the perfect student. I was uh, uh, I was the, I'm a lonely child. So literally like um, I was a lot in my head. I was catching a lot in my bedroom and having my fantasy, my dreams. I mean, I was I was uh, I was this child like dreaming a lot. I was always dreaming. What were you dreaming of? What were your ambitions? Uh, I wanted to be president of the world. <laughs> My parents explained me that it's not happening. I was like, why is it not happening? I want to change the world. And they were like, start to write songs. I don't know. Like, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's, um, I don't know. Like, I wanted so many things when I was young. I was, I was like, yes, a big dreamer. I was dreaming of changing stuff that I didn't, I, that, you know, like, that I didn't like. I wanted to, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I was literally... Uh, I was really good at school. I was good at sport. I was pleasing my dad, so I did a lot of. Uh, I was a, f a footballer, you know. I did football, um, and after I realized that uh, I wanted to be a lawyer also, um, because I wanted to travel and to speak different languages, and I wanted to fight against the rules and everything. <laughs> but I realized that it's better for me to become fashion designer. <laughs> you know, that's it. And tell me, what were your influences as a boy? Because do you remember your first fashion show, or do you remember? Well, did you care about clothes? Did you look at what your mother was wearing? Yeah, 
I remember above all my grandma, you know, with her Chanel purse and um, I remember that for me fashion always been really important in my culture also because I'm French, you know, and and I think for French people fashion has always been part of a uh, of um, of the culture, like uh, it's like food, you know, it's like this kind of thing that and fashion was really pop before because everybody knew who was Chanel, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, Dior, you know, it's, it's Balmain. There's this thing about like really feeling um, it's part of the patrimoine, you know, like uh, it's like Versailles, you know, there's this <laughs> thing that you know, it's a history. So so yes, fashion always been in my blood in a way, and always I remember like looking at old shows, trying to. You know the old movies about uh, Coco Chanel, or uh, like uh, um, I remember, like uh, Yves Saint Laurent with Catherine Deneuve. Uh, it's you know, it's uh, it's something that is part of my culture. Mm. And tell me, because music has been a big influence and still is, and you talk about it a lot. Um, were you interested in kind of this idea of um, the art world or celebrity or the creative universe at that at that point? It's very funny because a lot of people think that I'm um, I'm a star system person, and I'm really not. Like, if you really think about who I love, it's not 150 people. Like, uh, uh, I'm really close to the people that I love, and I love them also because they're really strong. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about um, the celebrity effect. What I care about is uh, the strong effect. Like, uh, the girls that I love that I'm close to are strong women, uh, and they show me. I can trust them, you know, we share mm. secrets, we share our stories, we, we feel like we have um, the same vibes, so, and happen that there are some celebrities, but uh, at the same time, I have many friends that are not celebrities, and, mm. uh, and the star system is not something that I belong to, I belong to real friendship. Mm. And that's what is funny, because a lot of people are like, oh, you love star system, I'm like, yeah, but I mean, look at who I love, I mean, there's not so many girls, mm. so many women, you know, I love a lot of people, but I mean, close to me, really close, I don't think you can see so much. Mm. Is that criticism frustrating sometimes that people? Yeah, because I think sometimes they don't realize that there's a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of work. Um, I mean, I, okay, I can be like an Insta addict. I can need an Insta rehab. Uh, <laughs> but the reality is that uh, look at my show, look at my work, look at my craftsmanship, look at the diversity. Start to see that there's a deep message in everything that I do. Like. You can dislike it, it's obvious, I mean, uh, but don't, don't judge me just because, you know, like, uh, uh, I have more followers, so I'm not a good designer. We can't do both, you know, like, it's not possible, mm. you know, I just think, you know, it's when someone says, uh, if you're pretty, you're, you're, you're dumb, like, uh, can't you have both, you know, yeah. so it's the same story with, with designer. You can be famous in a way and still being a good designer, and, and I feel sometimes people forget my work, like, mm. literally. Mm. Let's talk about you as a designer, because yeah. as you say, that what, that's what you were first and foremost before you became a creative director. And tell me, did you want to study fashion sort of when you were young? Because there was this point where you wanted to become a lawyer, but was it, the interest in fashion was there before that, though, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, tell me a bit about that. I think, ambitions. you know, fashion has always been in my mind. I mean, I always love the fact to look for identity. I think the fact that I come from what I told you before, I always love the clothes to actually make you feel you have an identity. It was something really personal. Um, so for me, I was creating my own story with my clothes, you know, I was dreaming and I was like thinking who I am, you know, and I remember like when I was a kid, I was dressing like a, like a, a prince and saying like, okay, I come from this country because I don't know where I come from. So mm -hmm. I, may, I mean, for me, clothes were really, really important to actually identify myself. But I also understood that it was like a passion, you know, something that you love and you, are, you can love shopping and everything. You can love styling, you can, do, you can love sketching, but you have to realize a bit older that you can make your passion becoming your job. It's not something easy that you realize at 12, you know. You can realize that maybe at 15 or 16 and talking to your parents and your parents like, really, you really think you can make that, uh, make that happen, you know, you're <laughs> sure it's a job? Don't you think it's more about... I give you more money and you get more clothes, like, uh, you know? <laughs> but um, it's something really interesting because I follow my, my instinct and I stopped uh, the, the school, like a law school, and I also stopped my fashion school and I wanted to work. So mm. I realized growing up that I wanted to become a designer and I understood that my job can also be a passion. Mm. Did you ever really want to be a lawyer? Ah, huh? sorry? Did you ever really want to be a lawyer? I or think not. No. 
people. I think I like the concept of it. <laughs> and I outfits. kind of like the people that was in the school, I have to say. <laughs> but I was actually not right, looking at the board, I was looking at the people around me that were pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but your parents, I'm interested because your parents, when you dropped out of law school, you've said in interviews before that they cut you off at that point. They said yeah. they didn't want to give you any more money. Yeah. Were, they, were they supportive still? Or? No, the, I mean... I mean, I think it's a way also to support me, to actually say to, to, to your kid, like, you know, now you're just going to walk with your legs, you know. Uh, and, uh, and I think it was smart from them because um, I faced so many things, that, I mean, it happened so many things in my life that uh, in a way uh, I grew up like as a strong person. You know, when you work in fashion uh, and you start at 18, you need to understand that you're going to face stuff that you are not expecting. And, and I think it made me stronger so that when mm -hmm. I see my interns now and I can see them like you know like having an, another work after uh, barman because they need to pay their rent you know mm -hmm. and uh, I remember who I was you know it reminded me completely um, the kid that I was and I think I understand also them a lot because mm -hmm. I used to actually dance in a club to actually uh, pay my rent you know so I know exactly what you feel mm. Yeah, tell me about that period where you were kind of trying to, to make it. Because you, you went to Italy first, which surprises me in a way, because being, you know, your French identity is something that's very important to you. What, why Italy? Uh, because I'm French. And mm. I think French, and it's about traveling, you know. Oh, that's like, I think the, f the, ma the most famous French people are the people that actually travel a lot in the world. And um, I always love French culture. Uh, and fashion uh, French culture. And uh, when you look at old shows from different designers, big designers, they've always been inspired by the rest of the world That's and true. they bring back to Paris. So I think I feel the same, you know, I'm really French in that. So I wanted to actually discover a different culture. And I kind of like, you know, this competition between France <laughs> and Italy. So I just think that for me, understanding what is fashion, the French fashion, I needed to also understand what is Italian fashion. Mm -hmm. So I went there, I obviously loved Italian culture and I wanted to learn a new language. I wanted to actually um, be in a different culture, leaving also my parents. So yes, it was really, really interesting. And honestly, I had three choices. I mean, I had three dreams when I was a kid. It was being an intern for Versace, uh, <laughs> Gucci uh, with Tom Ford and, uh, um, and Cavalli. Yeah. So, I mean, I was like that. I, I wanted both three, so <laughs> that's it. And why, why do you think Cavalli sort of gave you your break? Because they, you started working there and you kind of really worked your way up. What did they see in you? Um, the craziness. And I have to tell you the truth. It's, it's, it's just a matter of like, I arrived there and I was with my big uh, portfolio, gold. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they, they took me straight away and I met Peter Dundas, like, I think, an hour later mm -hmm. and they were like okay you start in six days mm -hmm. so that's what happened that's why I, I worked and I feel like you know it was really instinctive because they just liked me as a as a first you know first sight so I mean they were like okay uh, let's start now and I liked it mm -hmm. you've said sub subsequently in interviews that you didn't you're not mad about the aesthetic you didn't completely like what they were doing design wise mm. tell me what you learned there if you didn't like I mean it's not that I don't like, it's not that, uh, it's just, it's a different world and, um, and you know, I think I learned a lot as techniques and I learned a lot because it's an empire, you know, it's something, go everything really fast. Italian companies are, are maybe sometimes less laboratory than French, but also mm -hmm. make a lot of more money sometimes. So, I mean, the reality is that it's really interesting as a business where I'd like to really understand the machine. Um, but, you know, uh, I grew up and so at one point I realized that I wanted to do my own style, you know, but that's something that you need to learn with time. And, mm. and it was fine. And I had, the, honestly, I had the best years in my life because I met like str I mean, incredible people mm. like Peter Dundas, Roberto Cavalli, Eva Cavalli, the entire family. Um, I met Eric Wright, like so many amazing people uh, were there, like Anna Del Russo, George Cortina, like it's just a big family. And, uh, and it was just great to actually have been part of it. Mm. And tell me a bit, you said you've described Cavalli as really commercial. Do you think that's helped you? Because I think one of your skills is you're very good at knowing what, what will sell and what will be popular. Do you think it taught you that skill? Um, 
I don't think, I think, I think what is amazing is they also sell a dream and they also know how to sell it. So I think it's, a, and it's also commercial. And I think I learned a lot from that also because, you know, you can make beautiful dreams, but also you need to sell. So, I mean, yes, I learned a lot from that, from, from them. Like, uh, I mean, it's a business and you mm. can actually put a lot of emotion and personal feelings in everything. But at the end of the day, to keep, make those dream happening, you need to sell. So yes, it's, mm. uh, I learned a lot from that also. Mm. You've, you worked your way up there incredibly quickly as well. And one of the things that I'm interested in, and this is a difficult question for you to answer, anytime I talk to anyone about you, they say, you're so nice. It's like the big thing that everyone says, journalists, people you've worked with, but you've done so well so quickly. And how do you combine ambition with being really, really nice? Can I you think, be not nice? <laughs> you know, I think it's funny because since the beginning of the interview, it is like ambition and being nice, uh, famous, but at the same time, good designer. <laughs> I feel like, you know, those two words, like French uh, and international, those kind of things can all connect together. There is no problem. And uh, really, like, you can put them in the same sentence. There is uh, no, I mean, it's, yes, I think I'm, I think what will keep my ambition grow is because I'm nice and I'm not losing myself. Because it's really, really interesting what you say. I mean, it's really, it's really hard sometimes to actually, uh, you know, uh, look at me in the mirror and think, oh my God, you achieved so much already before mm -hmm. your 30s. And, uh, but, you know, I think what makes me happy is like, you know, this kind of day, like today, like you asked me like an uh, interesting question and I'm thinking of who I am. If you ask me who I'm going to be, I don't know. But I can mm -hmm. tell you who I am today and I'm really proud of it. And I'm really happy to have people around me that are nice also to me. You need, you need to be super careful because sometimes people can be like uh, fake. That's yeah. the difficult part. But um, no, I want to keep it simple and natural. And I think it's what happened to my life. Like everything happened because I worked a lot, but always be nice to people. It's karma mm -hmm. and karma can slap in your, your face when you have a bad karma. Yeah. And t tell me a bit, we've talked about Italy, tell me about coming to Bauman. What attracted you to working at Bauman? Because you worked under Christophe Tekkenen for, for yeah. a while. I think, you know, Bauman had all the um, components that I love because it's, it's, a, it's old French house, it's luxury, it's craftsmanship, it's embroidery, it's couture. At the same time, it's a lot of tailoring. I love the jolie Madame silhouette that uh, Pierre Bauman created because in a way it was really like this structure silhouette for a woman and, mm. you know, belts and making sure that it's really sharp, so it was really me. I obviously love um, the sexiness that uh, Christophe brought. I love Oscar de la Renta, also the couture and this romanticism that Barman had. I love the Barman story, like I love the Pierre Barman story. He was into like the jet set and the princesses of uh, Thailandia and uh, it was just like, it was just like, uh, you know, this kind of really crazy 70s universe and, uh, and I loved it, I think. So I wanted to, to go there. It's interesting you mentioned that jet set because it's something I was going to ask you later, but it's relevant now, which is I think a lot of designers, and maybe it goes back to what we were saying about you know fashion people kind of talking to themselves and being a bit elitist. They don't like to to say that they dress the jet the jet set. They I try know. and pretend that you know they dress like yeah, who do they dress? curators and chic artists and writers and these kind of very you know like I guess reserved lofty women. But you're very you don't care. You're very kind of you love that jet set lifestyle and you're happy to dress those people. Yeah, I mean, I love traveling. I love, um, I love meeting people. I love people that feel glamour and fabulous. I love people that feel comfort, comfy in their clothes and strong and powerful and confident. Mm. So, I mean, I can also love dressing writers. Like, but yeah. the reality is that is what I repeat is like, I dress galleristes. I, I mean, like a lot of women in New York that maybe are, mm. uh, are less known that some singers are in Bauman, but the reality is that you don't know because it's their strategy to actually yeah, yeah. make sure that no one gonna know them. So, I mean, like, I'm, which is amazing with the Bauman world is that people can think, okay, you dress uh, three girls, but I mean, we dress so much more, yeah. but people maybe sometimes they just want, when you want to be blind, you want to be blind, yeah. naturally. Uh, me, I'm really proud of uh, dressing people that are famous. I have no problem with that. I, I, and honestly, like, I'm happy also because if they are famous, it's because they know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and if they know how to communicate, it means that they are, a, it's a talent, I think, the communication today. So yes, I'm happy that they love my clothes and mm -hmm. actually I communicate with my clothes. Mm -hmm. And tell me, we talked a little bit about it at the start, but tell me about being made creative director because you said in interviews before you really didn't expect it. You yeah. were kind of managing the studio after yeah. Christoph left, but but tell me about when that call came. Um, 
that was really really intense this the moment that i knew it because um thanks to my team because i was managing the team so literally like I was the Christophe uh, right hand, so literally, like I knew who I was gonna work for, uh, with, you know, like, uh, and uh, they all trust me. They were like, "Take the job, yeah. Don't hesitate. Don't don't doubt. Just take it." And uh, and all my PR team also, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, when you ask me like, um, nice and ambition. I'm an ambitious person, but I always be nice with the people. Mm -hmm. So literally, like, you know. It's also, I think, the fact that I've been nice that helped me to be who I am today and what I got. Mm -hmm. And I also be nice always with my team. So what yeah. also make sure that they, they believed in me. They were like, yes, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make the most beautiful show because we trust you and we love you. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's something really nice from also my team. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I didn't expect anything. They proposed me and I was like, yes, of course, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And I have no hesitation, no doubt. Mm -hmm. That appointment, it has me, it's meant that you, you you know, you're an incredible person in fashion because, you know, you're one of the only visible black designers working in fashion. Yeah. And you must be, you must get a lot of young people who find that incredibly inspiring. But it also must be strange in a way to work in an industry that is, um, so, you know, not di diverse at all. I think it's changing. Now we are two. There's Kanye West and there's me. So <laughs> we are two designers. Um, we are two designers black and I hope there is way more. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, it's going to change, you know, you're going to have more uh, and, and also younger people. You know what I think it's, all, it's for me really interesting also is that it's a really old French house, you know, that's yeah. I think it's the most uh, significant for me because being a, a black guy that is under 30 uh, in one of the most luxury French house, I think it's it is a big achievement and yes, I hope it's going to change, but I'm really trying and the, really it's spontaneous for me, it's really natural, but I'm really trying to change also that because with my casting, with my girls, like with my campaigns, I'm really, really trying to show the new world because I mm. feel like sometimes fashion is sleeping and not really realizing that we are in 2015, you know, mm. the rules that you use in 92, it doesn't work anymore. The world mm. changed. Mm. Just start to open your eyes. Mm. Yeah, it must be incredibly frustrating because many would call fashion a racist industry. You see that if you just look at how many... Of course, I think it is. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Um, I think it is because in a way, like, um, sometimes when you heard like some fashion shows, they don't want to take more than three or four black girls. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how the fuck you can have this kind of thought? I mean, yeah. honestly. Like me, honestly, I'm really, really like not even thinking how many I have to put in my show. Like it's not even happening to me. I don't even see that she's black or white. Mm. That's the reality. I just see she's beautiful. Mm. Like how the fuck you can think, okay, we took the one from the new face from this agency. We're going to take the old face because she's more commercial and it's okay. We have to like, really? 2015? Mm. I mean, mm. how the fuck you can think like that? Like, I really, really don't get it. Like, this is something that. Why don't people call it? call the industry out on it more though because I find it really frustrating I find it strange as a writer you know people will go to a show and it will be all white casting and, and they won't say anything it's almost like it's become the norm and people I think it's so great that you speak out about it but why don't more people um because a lot of people are old I think for them it's you know they grow up it's like that yeah, that's you know I think it's this kind of people that when maybe they were in school they didn't have like they maybe have one black guy in their in their class you know yeah. so I mean the reality of a lot of people is that they they didn't grow up with like the I mean the generation that we are today like mm. I think it's I think it's also like um I think it's changing and some designers is really helping and um but um yeah I feel like you know, it's really funny because my last show, I got like really, really bad comments. Um, some really was really like some critics were really, really mean. And um, and one wrote like, it's so funny because the press release looked so amazing. And when I saw the show, I thought that has nothing to do with mm. because I was speaking about Paris, I was speaking about luxury, I was speaking about diversity, I was speaking about how I see the Parisian woman today mm -hmm. and everything. And I'm like, we don't get it. Like, nah, nah. And I was like, seriously, that's how is Paris today. Mm -hmm. And you have different women. Dif My casting is also diversity in the ages because, you know, you have moms with their two kids waiting for, 
for them at home and uh, you have like a, a new phase that is 18, you have Brazilian, you have Mexican, you have uh, Japanese, you have like everything, you know, and that's what I love. And I love seeing my girls when they do the, you know, the, um, they, they try for the, the runway, you know, they, the catwalk, first they try and they're like facing FaceTime with their kids. I just love it, you know. Mm -hmm. Instead of having just girls that you don't even know the name and you would not even remember in two weeks because you know like that's what happened also. I just love having strong personality in my clothes. Mm. And tell me this idea of kind of reflecting the street because it's become a cliche in fashion. You know, designers talk about it all the time, but they don't do it authentically. But you seem to to do it. Sorry, really. I didn't understand. This idea of reflecting the street. This idea of you know yeah. what's happening. Designers always talk about doing it. But they, you know, it's it's they don't do it. You know, they don't yeah. actually make things look like what's happening. And and how do you make sure? Because as you become more kind of, you know, more successful, and your life now is so amazing. How do you make sure that you always have that authentic link to what? But what thanks is to my Instagram. Yeah. Like thanks to actually keep my feet on the ground, understanding the the my generation, also younger people understand. You know, it's also interesting to read the comments when they like something and they feel touched by something. It's so funny when like like old ladies that co that comments your your you know old ladies writer that actually writer um, <laughs> critique your show and just say oh your show is old. Mm. And when you have like one million of followers, they actually like are I think less than thirty sometimes and mm. actually loving your fa your brand mm. and you're just like your show is old because you think it's not cool, you, know, mm -hmm. you think it's young, but you're more than 50, how you can judge if it's old or not? Mm -hmm. Because you saw maybe that in the 80s, but imagine like the eyes of someone that is 15, maybe this one will think it's new and young, you know? I mean, it's just really interesting how, um, it's interesting to listen to the street, and I think mm -hmm. the street of today is like the most beautiful thing. Yeah. Because I worked in couture, I love the couture and the craftsmanship, I love the unique, feeling but I realized that you don't need to look for only archives from the 60s to actually see the beauty of the life I mean I can be inspired by uh, by the picture that a guy is gonna post from uh, I don't know Japan mm. or I can be inspired by uh, a travel and going to LA and seeing my friends and dressing like crazy and just having a lot of archives and at the same time like styling this I mean I, I love the street the street mm. from the world actually mm. it's interesting you talk about this idea of the world a lot and I'm and I think it's amazing kind of the, um, yeah, from everything from how you, you conduct yourself and what you think about to how you cast your shows and the way you've described yourself as a boy of the world. Have you ever felt any confusion in your ethnicity or have you always just seen that sense of being from lots of different places as something empowering? I think, you know, when I was a kid, I was literally lying. I was saying that I come from Egypt, I come from Brazil, I say that I think I come from Morocco, I come from... Uh, I tried Norway, but no one believed me. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I I say so many different origins in my life that I don't even. I think I learned the map thanks to that actually, because I'm like, okay, this time we're gonna change because Taking obviously, like, places. you need to keep it for a year. When you change your class, you can change your. Um, so literally, like, uh, I decided at one point when you grow up to really ac accept the fact that you don't know where you come from and you're gonna make sure that you know where you know where you want to go. So. So yes, I'm I'm the I'm a boy of the world, and I'm happy. You know, like I love, I love the world. I love uh, who I am today. I don't know where I'm come from, where I'm where I'm from, but I know where I am and where I want to go. So. Mm. And tell me a little bit. I, I'm interested in this idea. It kind of goes back to Instagram again. Sorry, I keep bringing that up. But, but I love my Instagram. It's yeah, part no, of my I'm life. Yeah, I'm getting the vibe. I don't know how you've torn yourself away from it for this interview. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. It's just it's interesting to feel like. The conversation, if it's on Instagram and there is a, a depth in it, or if it's just like, oh, he's like a new blogger, you know, like uh, yeah. that's different. I love speaking about Instagram, just if we need to make sure that we take it seriously. Yeah, well, that's what's interesting because it seems that you do take it very seriously. And yeah. I find it interesting because I think there's a certain, um, not that you don't have respect for critics or fashion writers, but I think it's given you a new perspective where maybe you've realized that the kind of you know, the show reviews and all that writing that happens in fashion, it's, it is very kind of speaking to a small group, whereas Instagram, you know, yeah. that's really what people think. And has it made you care less about criticism? Of or? course, yes. Yeah. I love, I was re well, reading, um, I was seeing an interview in Paris, uh, I think it was two days ago, and Katie Horin was speaking about how the world is changing with, you know, Instagram, and she's like, mm -hmm. now people, is not about critique, it's more about likes. Yeah. And I like, 
Ah yes, <laughs> completely. Above all, when I see the last review, my last review. <laughs> no, I think I think and I think she's right, and I think it's pretty smart what she says because um, she says like people is more into likes and following than than criticism. But I mean, from that, I think you need to understand why the world is going to that. It's a consequence always of something, mm. and what is this thing? Because why fashion goes to that? When you have to think that the writer actually that are still writing today were the same writer 10 years ago. Mm. So when you think how the world is changing and you can see that fashion didn't change so much and why people go more to likes than reading their critiques mm. is because maybe they made it happen. Mm. And now why, I don't know, but I mean, if the world is changing, there is always a consequence of something. Mm -hmm. And what is the, why the cows? I don't know. But I have to tell you the truth. I really prefer to read like, someone that is like super, also a hater that's just gonna hate my show, but at least I feel like there's more mean and uh, uh, meaning and um, it's more significant because the guy or the girl that's gonna write is not paid, mm. you know? It's just someone natural that go and gonna insta and just say, you know what, I didn't like your show or I love your show and you feel like, you know, um, he's not gonna be fired tomorrow from the magazine because my house gonna call and just say like, uh, why did you do a bad comment or a bad critic on my designer, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, fashion is a mafia. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you see some reviews and you see like the crappiest show ever and they just can't say anything about the show, yeah. it's just like, oh wow. So that's why I love also Instagram because it's more natural, you mm -hmm. know? Like, uh, I think there's something real mm -hmm. that we lost. And I think when sh people say um, it's more likes than, uh, than criticism, yeah, but why? Mm. How well, how the magazine became now, mm. you know? Yeah, it's interesting because someone saying that you know it's more likes than criticism, it implies that they think it's kind of mindless or like there's not kind of like true um, yeah no, critique. But actually, if you look at as you say, if you look at what's happening at the magazines, they're driven by advertisers. You know, it's criticism, but it's not criticism. It's kind of being very, it's it's writing nice things about people you need to write nice things about. Do you think that fashion became too? too corporate in a way and not yeah. authentic enough. I think sometimes they, th they say it's too political. I really don't think it's enough political. That's mm. the reality of fashion. I think fashion is becoming, you know, a kind of... Um, I mean, I think most of all the covers and... Uh, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, you're going to put some clothes on the cover because you know that maybe it's going to be the biggest advertising, you know. Mm. Uh, but if you get a lot of likes on your clothes, it's not because you pay anyone to yeah. actually having the likes. It's because people are gonna just say, "I love this outfit." Mm -hmm. So I think, I think yes, fashion becomes like a big machine, and obviously it's amazing because it's a big business. But you just really want to know like how, why people is just so bored of it. Why people is more into digital Instagram and less into criticism? Because I feel like they want truth. They want real reality. Mm -hmm. Like. Um, I'm so, for example, happy with the success of my friend Kim because she's like mm -hmm. 10 seasons on a row with her uh, real TV and when people say, oh, she has no talent, I'm like, she has more talent than every, every, like, everybody, like, she's a businesswoman, she has, like, a real TV that actually keep going on and on and on and why? Because people want truth, they want realness, you know, reality and, and I think it's also that in fashion that happened now, people want to have real thing face mm -hmm. to them, like, just, they want to believe in something that is real and just not having lie, you know? Do you worry then, because people often talk about Instagram becoming quite fake, you know, people taking kind of 20 pictures before they post one, or kind of, even now you are seeing brands paying for things to be posted on Instagram. That must be strange. Yeah, and it's gonna happen, and it's gonna be a new app that's gonna, you know, <laughs> I think it's always that. Um, they need time to mm. understand. When they understand, they're just gonna, make it happen again and again and again you know like you you're using photographers big photographer now to take picture and post on your instagram you you are also i'm looking at now uh, if some writers or like journalists they're going to take a picture of my show um instead of taking picture of other show you know you don't mm. uh you just check you know you do a video for in backstage and you're going to check if the magazine put the video or not and you just like, you know, like, obviously, like, I think it's important, you know, like, uh, Instagram today is a new way of understanding uh, also the feeling of, of the people. And, um, and where before people were, me and my first show, people were applauding at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Now it's just the flash of the iPhones, yeah. you know, like, f in four years, everything changed mm -hmm. straight away. And now you're just more into 
before I was like going on website to actually see the critic and being super scared and being like, okay, what's gonna say? Nah, nah. Now I'm just going on my Instagram and <laughs> seeing if they re -gram my show. Mm. Like, I'm, that's what happened. That's the new life. You mentioned before um, Kim, Kim Kardashian, and yeah. I want to, to ask about some of the women who you, and maybe some specifically the celebrities who you yeah. work a lot with, people like Kim Kardashian, people like Rihanna, you mentioned Kanye West before, and I find it intriguing, um, fashion's relationship with celebrity, because on one hand, fashion people really court celebrities, but on the other, they're incredibly kind of lofty and can yeah. be quite snobby, and, and you must have found that a bit. I think the fashion world's reaction to someone like Kim has been quite strange in some hands, you know, very positive and on the hands very dismissive and and you seem to have kind of taken a very fresh view. Oh uh, yeah, me, I love her. I, I'm her biggest fan, biggest friend. Like, I just love this woman. Mm. I think, um, I think it's, she's just changing the world also that you like or you don't. You have to recognize that she's the one that actually changed the world. She's a strong woman. She's also, I think it's all really funny as a designer because everybody, everybody wants to dress her also, like so many designers. She's on the yeah. front row of every show and she's not 185 with 25 kilos, you know? I think it's also that also interesting. She's bringing the woman body again, like, uh, mm. um, you know? And what is funny about fashion, they are like, um, oh, we, we, we go to girls that are too thin and too nana. And now we are like going for a real woman mm. uh, with real shape and, uh, and I think thanks to her, you know, like she's bringing back something really fresh in fashion. She's also bringing uh, the diversity because she's um, American, Armenian, uh, she's with Kanye, which is black, North is like the most beautiful baby, like mixed mm. race, you know, like I feel like that's the new world. And at the same time, she's a super strong businesswoman. She's the most humble person. I mean, she's when you go with her, when you have dinner with her, she talks to everybody. She's really like, I mean, I love her and I can trust her. Um, it's someone that I have in my heart and whatever happens, she will always be with me. And, um, and sometimes people don't get it or they don't want to, you know, it's jealousy. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I don't care about what they think. They really have to understand that. For example, you asked me about me, but me, if I, ask, if I tell you about her, for sure, in 20 years, we're gonna open books and think about her, mm. how she changed an entire uh, world, I think. Mm. Do you think people Vision. criticize because they're jealous or because they're scared? I think in some ways, a lot of the people who criticize, they're nervous of, you talk a lot about you know, your generation, the new yeah. world, and I think a lot of people are very scared of that because it means that it might leave their, their job you know, obsolete if you're a fashion critic and no one's reading criticism. You know. Do you think po people are nervous a bit? Yes, of course, they're really, really scared. I think that's why it goes so... I mean, I think they're more... I mean, um, I, I can see from my show, like, um, when Kim arrives to my show, it's like, it's huge uh, impact. Like, mm. people are like crazy fans. And, and also Rihanna, like, you can feel the power that those girls and women have on the people. And I think there's a lot of jealousy because maybe, like, you know, 10 years ago, you were like, oh my God, this writer is coming to the yeah. show now. I mean, I don't even know if she came or not. I don't care about whatever writer. Like some I care, yeah. but you know, like I feel they kind of like, some are kind of frustrated yeah. and repressed, I think, because in a way like, they don't have any more their scene, you know, so. Mm. Mm. And tell me a little bit about kind of, I guess like this idea of the Bauman army, which people talk about a lot. Yeah. And why do you think they use the word army? You know what? I'm gonna tell you completely the truth. Um, it's happened during my last winter show, uh, not my last, not this one, but the one before, a year ago. And, um, and I felt like my life is, beco is becoming a battle because <laughs> I was literally trying to please so much, you know, the press and and, and, and at that point I was like, I don't want to please anyone except myself. And from this moment, when I start to choose different music for my show, mm. when I start to actually put more pop culture, when I start to do also different castings, like really, really, I realized that actually sometimes fashion is like a fight, a battle. Yeah. And so to fight against it, just be part of my army. And I start to create the Bauman army. That's it. And it's, in, in, it's, a, fa it's a fabulous army. It's a glamour army. There is no violence, obviously. It's just an army of vision, you know, and of strong people in it. But it's because I really became someone that pleased myself, trying to please myself, I believed in army. 
Who are you fighting against? Um, the system sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, with Instagram, when I start to have my Instagram, when I start to actually, you know, playing more uh, pop culture, um, having reference that are not from the 50s or the 60s, uh, you know, you, you know that when you're gonna say, you know, I can be inspired by uh, this uh, girl that uh, I love her new album and your song, they're like, really? Why your muse uh, uh, is not from the 80s? Mm. And just like, why my muse can't be from 2015? Why I can't be inspired by her? Mm. And, um, and I think that was at the beginning really, really hard because, you know, like sometimes people don't get it and I face different and also today different uh, mm. troubles. But I'm so, so happy and proud of what I do. So, I mean, but that's why, I mean, I think we build this army because I really understood that the day that I'm start to please myself and believe in what I want really, I will have to actually go against a lot of, lot of things. So you don't think you're doing that yet? Are you not totally being yourself? Are you not totally doing exactly what you want? I think, I, I think I'm on the right track, like um, going, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, you know, day after day, like I'm not even 30, you know, so I mean, I can tell you that I know exactly who I am. I know that I'm discovering step by step and my collection are growing at the same, at the same time I'm growing. So, I mean, I, I think I would never know exactly who I am, but I will always try to look for it. That's mm -hmm. it. And do you think you'll become, you'll break even more rules, become more outspoken? Yes, I really think so. I think I'm not looking, honestly, above all, because I'm not looking for it. Like sometimes I say some sentences that they, they retake and they are like literally like saying, oh, he say that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not, and as you can say, I'm really spontaneous. I'm not calculating anything. I'm just telling you my feelings. And sometimes it gets too political. And I'm like, really? I mean, I don't understand why. I mean, I don't know. I think there is way more to, to push as boundaries today. Um, but I think it's changing. I mean, I think I'm trying with my little, uh, little, little power, I'm trying to actually change a bit the world on my way, in my way. It's very humble. It was a privilege talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.